Hey everybody, welcome back to the Airsoftology Q&A show. I'm your host, Jonathan Higgs, and I'm here to help kind of demystify everything in the Airsoft world. In fact, this week we got some great questions. This show is actually yours, so make sure to put your questions in the comment section below and vote up your favorites. Also, if you want to help support the show, don't forget, I've got a web store with all these, let me try to hold all these right so you can see them. Got these morale patches are in the store. They are free shipping, let me see, move the doggies, <laughs> free shipping worldwide. Uh, they are uh, actually priced pretty good and they go to support the channel. Uh, helps keep this channel free for you and, and up and running. Also, don't forget to hit the sub button and the notification bell. I mean, everybody knows now the notification bell is pretty much just the subscribe button these days. You don't even have a subscribe page anymore if you didn't know on YouTube, they're taking it away. Um, so yeah, fun fact, just make sure you hit that notification bell. I upload every single week to here to help answer your questions, like I said, and do reviews here on this channel and also special events. Um, aside from all that, uh, don't forget also at the very end, I do have a video recommendation of the week that comes from you this week. A little different, uh, but I am saving up all of yours from last week. We got some really good ones last week too. I'm going to put them in future ones. Make sure to put your channel or a channel you like down there. Anyway, enough about all that. Let's dive on into what you're really here for, and that's your questions in the Tipman mail call. Hey, Ricky Tor, right? Nice video. Notice the Cowboy Bebop model behind you. What do you think about the upcoming changes to YouTube with having to mark videos for kids or not, and the potential heavy fines if you mess up? Anyway, uh, but yeah, I'm a little Bebop fan. It's 20 years. God, 20 years now? 21 years? It's a long time. Anyway, they just re-released this one. God, I gotta get my hands right. They just released this, the swordfish on this. Um, so anyway, that came from my Japan trip. Being a geek, I'm a total geek. Come on, we're all, most of us are geeks. But as for the YouTube fines, yeah, this is something very serious. So if you guys and gals don't know, this affects everyone worldwide. The Federal Trade Commission and YouTube have settled. Uh, uh, kind of a lawsuit, I guess, or a charges brought by the Federal Trade Commission to YouTube. They've just recently settled this, and as part of that settlement, now all of us are officially, which we should have been anyway, under the COPA Act, which is checked, uh, Child Protection Online, I forget what the acronym stands for, but it's the Child Protection Online video, basically having child actors in your videos, having children present in your videos, and making content directed toward children. Uh, so anyway, um, fortunately for me, I, I do live, I feel like, in a more safer band, but we're talking about the federal government here. I mean, the U.S., it, it, you know, they already said flat out, they will make an example. They will absolutely said, we will find people and we're going to make an example out of them. I mean, word for word, not exact words, but pretty much uh, that we're, they're going to wait. It kicks in in January uh, and we're going to see. I think you're going to see people get brought up pretty fast. As for me uploading, it's now part of the process where I have to say every video is or isn't intended for children or has child actors in it and things like that. So I think as Airsoft, we're probably okay in this one. Um, but if anybody missteps, the fine is huge. I'm talking huge, like tens of thousands of dollars, US dollars per Incident. It's like 34000 or 43000 It's a lot of money, U.S. dollars per incident. So someone's going to get singled out and they're going to pick some channel and I do not want to be me. So, you know, I think going through my back catalog, I'm pretty good. Uh, I, I've kind of audited some things to make sure to play it safe, but you never know, right? And YouTube evolves. I think as it stands now, Airsoft's still going to be okay on YouTube. We're going to be all right. But um, as things change, I'll keep you guys and gals updated. Devasaur writes, so about my language question, what languages do you speak? If you speak more than one, do you find it helpful with Airsoft? So in Airsoft, I'll, I'll kind of address the second part first and then we'll go back to the other side. It absolutely helps because no matter where you play, you need to know how to say some basic things like call out your enemies, uh, where they are, communicate with your squad and call yourself out. Probably the biggest one uh, out there. So those are all the things you need to know, especially like numbers, things like that for chronograph, all the different things. It, it's helpful. I mean, the most important thing is just at least understanding how to call yourself out. I think that's it. And when somebody else calls themselves out so you don't overshoot them. Uh, it's different everywhere I've played. Uh, and to answer your question, hablo un poco espanol and wahashuo idian jongwen. For those of you who don't know, I, I speak a little Spanish. I'm not that great, but I do speak some Mandarin. It's been improving every day. I've been in, in Taiwan for two years now, so I hope it's getting better at least because uh, i got to order food and directions and things like that. I can get by, definitely. Also, when I traveled to Japan like I did last week, 
it's important to know how to call yourself out. Japanese is pretty easy to say hito. That, that's a pretty easy one uh, to do, but just to make sure you know those things uh, to call yourself out and to be able to, to, you know, function in airsoft as you travel and play. And as I watch a lot of YouTube videos, I notice how people call themselves out in other countries. I like to watch a lot of international videos. So yeah, uh, that's kind of my language background. Of course, English uh, is my main one. <laughs> but uh, aside from that, yeah, okay on the Mandarin and eh, I can get by just barely on the Spanish. We got a double one here. I'm going to bundle them together. Eric Louis writing in about mixing green gas and CO2 magazines in a loadout for a single GBBR system, just as the WE Scar L, and allow for cold playing. And then also Revlux has a question about licensed Glocks airsoft blowback pistols with Umarex and Elite Force. Hearing that they have both the CO2 and the green gas versions have the same internals, and you can swap mags between the guns. And he goes on to ask about why this isn't advertised as such. And that's a good question. Um, it's becoming a new trend now. If you look at like, for example, I think it started with the P, like not started, but became much more viable. And I think commercially viable with the P09. The ASG released the CZ P09, uh, still arguably one of the better pistols out there made period that had dual power sources on the same pistol. It was kind of not really advertised at it, but advertised as it. Um, going forward, we're going to talk about the Glocks. The Glock series, most of them, if they offer a CO2 mag, yes, we're looking at the same internals on both of those. And uh, I, if you reach out to Elite Force, they're going to tell you that they are it's just you're picking your power source. It makes sense for these companies to just go ahead and reinforce the parts so they'll all run with CO2 and quality control at that level. And then you can just use green gas with it as well. They of course balance the pistols so the power levels are right. Another one out there is the M17 by SIG, but you gotta be careful with some of these. While the P09, your power level's good, the Glock, your power level's good on CO2, the M17, the power level can take you above 400 feet per second. Uh, and that is actually intentional by the company. So there's, you just gotta make sure that you're going to operate within the FPS requirements uh, or meters per second or joule energy, however it's measured where you are, of your local field and your country. But I think more and more are doing that. I think the GBBRs, you're seeing a lot of that too. There's even talk and rumor that KWA is going to finally be releasing a CO2 magazine, which I would love to see. Their LM4 platform is the only one that's ATF approved in the United States. It's proven itself over the years. And like I said, pretty much the only M4 platform you can legally get in the States. Uh, there's some gray areas you can bring other ones in, you know, but actually the one that's been officially approved is theirs. I'd love to see a CO2 uh, magazine option for it. And I'm curious to see if they're going to reinforce anything or provide an upgrade kit or retrofit kit, or if there's none needed for that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm curious. So all in all, I think it's uh, something more and more companies are doing when they develop. If you think about the Elite Force Glocks, which are made by VFC, the M17, the SIG, uh, SIG Arms M17, which is made by VFC, the, both of those are, you know, new, very new options that are uh, out there for pistols that are going that way. Now, there's a lot of old ones that don't have it, but I think more and more as companies start to develop new ones, you're seeing this as a new trend. The Milsim Preacher writes, Hey, Jonathan, love the show. What was your favorite American Milsim event? This one is super easy. Hands down, it's Copperhead. Operation Copperhead takes place in Playas, New Mexico, out in the middle of the desert in this old copper mining town that's now been converted to a military training facility uh, for, I think, the University of, was it? Arizona bought it, even though it's in New Mexico, or I forget who owns it, but it's a university and they use it for like, you know, military and law enforcement training as part of it. And it is the coolest thing. You are really out in the middle of nowhere, but they're functional homes and you can actually stay on if you can, uh, you can reserve, I think, or certain people can reserve uh, if you're sponsors or whatever. Some of the houses to actually stay in, they have running water and everything out there. But uh, for the most part, it's you battle through this huge, huge neighborhood. And they've also built up areas to be like Afghan villages, things like that. There's also outposts that I've really never even seen. And it's just huge, sparse land, desert outside. It's high desert out there, everywhere else. Probably the absolute coolest place to play between the buildings, once you get into a house, actually having to take the homes, but then having to move in these large, expansive areas with very little terrain just like scrub brush and stuff in between buildings. And there's also streets, so vehicles play a huge part here as well because there's paved roads everywhere. It's super cool. It's this weird, neat dynamic you just really can't find anywhere else. And probably absolutely my favorite game to go. I missed it this year and I definitely am going to mark it on my calendar to make it next year. It hasn't always has been my favorite American Milsom event. Hands down, easy for me to pick. There's a bunch of great ones, but that one, number one in my book.
All right, that's it for questions this week, which means it is time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one, I'm calling an audible. I'm, I know everybody's like, oh, Jonathan, you're not gonna pick mine. Trust me, I've got some great ones. They're coming up next week. This week, I had to give a shout out to Matt and Tim, or the Airsoft Amigos. <laughs> They're based out of Canada. And you might recognize Tim. This is Tim who used to be with Red Wolf. Uh, so now he's actually independent doing this thing with Matt. And these two guys are, and it's not even Matt, it's different Matt. Uh, they're doing a kind of a show called the Airsoft Amigos. And it's definitely tongue in cheek. It's funny. It's a little quirky humor, something I always love. And they kind of walked around in this thing and ambushed us. Uh, Matt was doing the interviewing. Tim was behind the camera and uh, got a lot of us that are in the airsoft, like the, the media world, like all of us that are kind of like the, the, you know, doing YouTube and Instagram and all that stuff, and asked us, and we didn't know what was coming. Uh, we knew, we were warned, we we're like, hey, we're gonna interview you and it's gonna be weird and just ad lib and go for it. You can do what you want. Um, definitely, definitely was worth d watching. It's just, it's funny how like all of us can be quirky and awkward and, you know, on purpose and, um, it's definitely worth it. If you're, if you're a fan of anybody like Airsoft Alphonse or you know, House Gamers, like Dayton, if you're Jet, Leah, uh, the old Tim from, used to be from Airsoft GI, now he's with Crytac, Chris. There's a lot of us in there, and it, including myself, and it's hilarious. It's absolutely funny. Plus a great channel. These guys are, are, are relatively new to the scene on this channel, and one we're subbing to. I think they're under 10,000 subs right now. But definitely a video worth watching, uh, not even for my part. I've got a few little bit parts throughout. In fact, uh, as I mentioned earlier about speaking languages, I, 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 I teach you one small Mandarin phrase, which is probably shouldn't be teased. Anyway, uh, but anyway, check it out. If you guys like what you see, of course, as always, go over to their channel, mash the sub button over there, put a comment under their video, letting them know that I sent you over there. And of course, if you have a video of your own on your own channel or a channel you love, please put it down in the comment section below and vote those up and make sure to get people to put thumbs up on those. I will try my darndest every single week to recommend other airsoft channels out there for everyone to see and be a part of. Anyway, so that's it for this show. As for, don't forget, if you guys want to support the show, I got some tactical doggo patches. I got some sing patches. These are all in the web store. You can pick these up uh, under $10 US for pretty much everything in the store, shipping included worldwide. Um, anyway, so that's it. I will see you all next time. Until then, go out, play some airsoft, have some fun, but no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.